Now that we spent all of that time creating this nice data structure, we're in a great position to be able to execute our suites and our tests. Before we do, I'm going to add one more property to our data structure, and that is going to be depth. In this case, the top level is going to have a depth of zero, then one, then two, and so on and so forth. I think this is going to be very useful when it comes to writing our reporter. This is also very easy. All we need to do is say depth, and that is just going to be equal to the stack.length. Remembering this is going to grow and shrink depending on the depth. I'm going to add this both to add suite as well as down here in my add test event as well. Let's go ahead and try this out. This is working as expected. The top level is going to have a depth of zero and then one, and then we're going to have two, and then we're going to start again at zero for the next suite. So that was a very easy feature to add. The next thing we need to do is figure out how we're going to execute all of our suites and our tests. We already have a function for that down here called run. So let's go ahead and take advantage of this. The first thing we need to do is ex uh, identify all of our root suites. We're going to have two root suites, the demo top level suite and the demo two. Then we're going to recursively iterate over the children, executing each one of those as well. The first thing we need to do is identify our root suites. We're currently working with handlers, which is a JavaScript map. You can't actually iterate over this that easily. What you can do is turn it into an array and iterate over it. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable here. I'm going to call this one root suites, and that's going to be equal to array.from. We're going to pass in the handlers, and then we're going to reduce this to a pair of IDs. Reduce takes two arguments, accumulator and current, and I'm just going to go ahead and console log these so you can see what is going on. We'll just do a console log in here, and that's going to be on accumulator and on current. And current is not what you might expect. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. We can see the accumulator is always an empty array. That's exactly what I expected. And current is not going to be a single variable. It's going to be an array. The first entry is going to be the ID, and the second one is going to be the data structure. What we're going to do is check if it's a parent. If there is a parent, we know it's not a root suite. However, if parent is undefined, we know we are looking at a root suite and we're going to push that one into our accumulator. All we need to do is uh, make a single line here and we're just going to return depending on that value. So we're going to see if current one, which is going to be the data structure, dot parent is equal to undefined. If it is, we know it's a root, uh, root suite, so we're going to return the accumulator and we're going to pass in current zero, which is going to be that ID. So that's going to be up here. Otherwise, we're just going to return accumulator. Let's go ahead and do a console log on both the handlers and on root suites, just so we can see what is going on and make sure everything is working correctly before we progress. We can see we're getting two root suites. The first starts with 6a and the second one starts with 2-0. If we scroll up here and take a look at our first suite, it does start with 6a, so that one is correct, the parent is undefined, and we have exactly the same thing down here. Parent is undefined and it starts with 2-0. So this is working correctly. We've identified our two root suites. The next thing we need to do is re recurse over those and execute all of the children. So what I'm going to do is create a new function. It's going to be asynchronous, and I'm going to call this one run suites going to take an array of IDs and we're just going to loop over each one of those and we're going to kick this one off with passing in root suites. The first thing we need to do is loop over those IDs so I'm going to say const ID of IDs and let's go ahead and do some conditional checks here depending on if it's a suite or a test. The first thing we need to do is grab the element it's either going to be a suite or a test and that's just going to be equal to handlers.get remembering this is a JavaScript map so we use get to access the value and then we're passing in the ID and we're going to check first if it is a suite. In this case, we can just compare the type and see if it is equal to suite. And if it is, I'm going to do a console log just to make sure everything is working correctly. Let's go ahead and run this one and see what happens. We are getting the two top level suites, so this is working correctly. What we need to do is then recursively execute this on the children as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to say run suites and pass in suite or test, which is going to be a suite or a test dot children. Let's run this one again and see what happens. And we're now logging all three of our describe blocks. We have top, our demo top level, we have demo nested, and we have demo two. The next thing we need to do is implement the logic for tests as well. So let's just go ahead and do that. We're going to see if it's a test, and if it is, we're going to do much the same thing. We're going to log the title, but in this case, there's not going to be any children. Instead, we are going to go ahead and call the handler. Let's go ahead and give this one a try and see what happens. Just going to delete this one. We don't need to run suites anymore. Head back here and do this. And it is working correctly. 
We logging our top level, then our nested one, then our test, demo two and works. And now we're getting an error. This error is expected because we're uh, making a false assertion here. These two are obviously not equal to each other and we are getting this assertion error. So far, everything is working correctly. What we need to do now is keep track of the failures or the passes of the test. And at the moment, we have no way to know if a test has passed or failed. What we are going to do is make an assumption. I'm going to say that all tests have passed until they have failed. So I'm going to pass in a result here and we're just going to say pass is equal to true. We're going to assume everything is passing, so innocent until proven guilty. Now that we have that, if we do fail, we're going to catch the error and update the result to be a failure. So let's go ahead and change that one down here. We're going to need to do a try catch here and check for the specific error. In this case, it's going to be an assertion error. So what I can do is just say if e.name is equal to assertion error, we know we've uh, caught the correct error in here. And we're going to have to do the correct log. Let's just go ahead and make sure this is actually getting caught. I'm just going to do a log on E. If we head back here and run this, we are catching the error correctly, it looks like, and it does what we're expecting. We're just doing a console log here, and it's showing the error here. There are a few extra properties we can do. I can do E.actual, and I can also do E.expect. Let's go ahead and run this again. We can see the first one is the actual value of foo. The second one is undefined. I think this is supposed to be expected. Now we have access to the failure and we also have the two values. So let's go ahead and keep track of that inside of our test. We already have access to the test, it's sweet or test. So I can just go ahead and update it right now. I'm going to say sweet or test dot result and pass it in here. We're going to say pass is a failure and then we're also going to have a message. In this case, I'm going to say uh, expected and pass in my expected value. And that's just going to be json.stringify. I'm using JSON stringify here because if we have an object, we want to be able to display it correctly. In this case, it's going to be e.expected. And otherwise, we're going to pass in the actual value as well. So I'm going to first have a new line, two spaces, and then we're going to say actual and pass in the actual value. Again, JSON stringify to make sure everything is displayed correctly and just say e.actual. Finally, if we did everything correctly, this should hopefully be working. Let's go ahead and run this again. We have no errors. Uh, what we're going to do at the very end of this is go ahead and log our actual uh, suite or our, our handlers to see if everything is looking correct. Just to make sure it is looking correct, I'm just going to log handlers here and see what happens. You can see we're going to have our result here. The pass is false and we have our message. So everything is working correctly so far. The next thing we need to do is make sure we're actually displaying this correctly. And that's where our custom reporter is going to come in. And we're going to implement that in the next lecture.